Uh, as Nicholas just said, I'm Lucy and thank you all for coming. Um, today I'm going to tell you all a little bit about a very successful female British entrepreneur with a very interesting story. Um, so you may be thinking, but why are you doing a presentation on Joan Malone? Well, after reading her book, I was really inspired to share some of the messages and ideas she has gathered over her life that I feel can help to inspire uh, more people, not only to go forward with subjects such as business, but in general, put in the work in order to achieve anything you want in life, because she is just one brilliant example that if you want something bad enough you're willing and are willing to put in the work, then you really can achieve whatever that is for you. So, who exactly is Jo Malone? Jo Malone is a brand that perhaps some of you have heard of, but even if you have heard of Jo Malone uh, as a brand, you may not have ever thought about the woman behind it all. Joanne Leslie Malone, CBE, is a British entrepreneur and founder of Jo Malone London and Jo Loves. Uh, she is globally recognised for revolutionising the beauty industry and creating some of the world's favourite fragrances. Although she is one of the most inspirational and well-known entrepreneurs of our age, her personal journey to international brand prominence has not been easy. Growing up, Jo Malone's parents taught her many of the skills that proved vital in her entrepreneurship later in life. Jo grew up on a council estate in suburban London and her father had multiple jobs, including being a freelance magician magician and selling paintings at the local market. She started growing her entrepreneurial nature at just eight years old, when she started helping her father sell the paintings and took many skills from this. Jo states that she took from her father the skill of great adaptability when it comes to dealing with the unexpected. Her childhood was not easy and not only did her father have to work multiple jobs to make ends meet, but Jo actually overtook took over selling the paintings at the market after her father wasn't able to while she was still in secondary school. Jo's mother worked as a beauty therapist and went on to run her own business doing facials. When Jo was old enough, she helped her mother to do the treatments and make the beauty products that the mother sold. Eventually, however, her parents separated and Jo's commitment to supporting her mother had, de had a detrimental effect on her schooling and she left education with no qualifications. Jo says in her book that nothing is wasted in life and that no matter who you are, where you come from, or what difficult circumstances you face, there is nothing you can't achieve. Jo was told at school that she would make nothing of her life. She struggled academically and found out that she had dyslexia when she was a teenager. She said that the learning disability was never disabling, but a gift which allowed her to think creatively and face failure with an open mind. She was publicly replied to other beginning dyslexic entrepreneurs request for help, encouraging dyslexics to allow their trials to build business muscle and spot new ideas around every corner. Jo went independently into the beauty therapist industry and started her own salon under her own name. She carried her, mas her massage bed door-to-door -door around London offering treatments. Jo Malone London was started from the kitchen in her small flat in London in 1983 but it wasn't until 1994 that the first store opened. Not long after this, Jo sold the company to Estee Lauder and the brand expanded to overseas markets, opening stores from New York to Paris. In 2003, Jo was diagnosed with breast cancer, which she battled for many years. However, after overcoming the disease, she decided to step down from her role as creative director of the brand, meaning she cut all ties with Jo Malone London. A few years following her battle and overcoming of cancer, Jo found herself needing to come back into the fragrance industry. However, selling Jo Malone London legally blocked her from re-entering the industry for another five years and meant her name now had legal restrictions. Jo felt she had made a big mistake exiting the perfume industry, but knew that she could recreate what she had before from scratch once again. Jo created the brand Jo Loves in 2009 once again created a successful global company on her own. The story of Jo Malone really brings to life business studies. Marketing within the competitive environment is just one example of this. Jo Malone London's competitors are amongst some of the largest brands in the industry due to the brand's luxury image and the size of the company. This means there is fierce competition, especially when it comes to marketing. Through studying business, there are opportunities to make connections between what we learn in lessons and actually see it in action in real life through businesses such as Joe Malone. 
For example, if you decide to take business, you will learn about the four P's in marketing, product, price, promotion, and place. These are what gives a business such as Joe Malone, Chanel, or Dior their brand, their brand image and is why we see these brands as luxury. So what can we all learn from Joe's story? Joe's story shows us the importance of courage and creativity, which I'm sure you all know are two core school values. Show your creativity, be imaginative, passionate, and positive. Joe shows us that you can't always just follow the natural path that everyone else takes. Show your unique creativity through the things you do and are passionate about. Find it is that you love what it is that you love to do, just as Joe found her love of perfume and pursue it. The most important thing I think we can learn from Joe is her courage. You can do this by being yourself, being involved, and most importantly, being resilient. If you don't do well in an exam, don't make a team or feel you have failed at something, that is not a setback, but an opportunity. Show your resilience and be courageous throughout the hard things in life and continue to be involved in what it is that you want to do and keep working hard until you get where you want to be. Jo Malone is one example, but there are also so many other female entrepreneurs. Here are just a few more. Elizabeth Arden opened her first salon in New York City in 1910. Arden was instrumental in making the use of cosmetics respectable. By just 1915, she was selling her products internationally, and her company was on its way to becoming a global brand. Coco Chanel, after being sent to an orphanage as a child, went on to put her skills with a needle and thread to good use. She started her now globally famous brand, selling just hats. Eliza Tinsley took over her husband's self-employed trade in 1851 after being widowed and reshaped it into the Eliza Tinsley Company and grew it into a hardware manufacturing business with 400 employees, and the company still exists today. Estee Lauder wanted to find a way for women to buy their own perfume, so in 1953 she created a bath oil that doubled as a skin perfume. This innovation took the cosmetics industry by storm, changing the way fragrance was sold and transforming the startup company into a multi-million dollar business. Lauder was the only woman on Time Magazine's 1998 list of the 20 most influential business geniuses of the 20th century. Along with this, brands such as Tiffany have showcased inspirational and successful women through their company. The Tiffany Yellow Diamond, which has been worn by women that leave a legacy with their work, those that have worn the diamond include Audrey Hepburn, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, and Mrs. E. Whitehouse. Diamonds are a symbol of love and devotion. However, yellow diamonds represent not only this, but the color represents knowledge, intellect, and wisdom, of which all these women have been recognized to have. There are also countless entrepreneurs with learning disabilities. For example, here are some entrepreneurs with dyslexia. Walt Disney, Richard Branston, Jamie Oliver, Steven Spielberg, Henry Ford, and Mrs. Jester Hansel. There are countless entrepreneurs and famous people who have succeeded who have learning disabilities. As well as this, Albert Einstein had autism, and ADHD is more common amongst entrepreneurs than in the general population. People with ADHD are three times more likely to become entrepreneurs than anyone else. So what exactly is it that's keeping you from reaching your goals? Jo also says that instead of asking why me, she prefers to ask why not me. Use your differences and challenges to help you and don't limit your aspirations based on your flaws or circumstances. There really are no obstacles you can't overcome in business and I hope this showcases the fact that the most successful people in the industry have overcome many obstacles to get where they are today. Jo didn't naturally excel at anything. She just put her head down and did it with hard work, grit, and determination. Thank you all so much for listening. I just want to leave you with a quote from Jo herself. I want people to look at me and think, if she can do that, what can I do? I'm a woman who's dyslexic, can't tell my left from right, can't swim. I'm so bad in cars, it's best I don't drive. I can't fill out a form on my own, and when I go into a bank, I have to ask someone to help me. I have zero qualifications, so I really shouldn't be where I am in life, but I am. Business isn't rocket science. It's courage, creativity, and having the faith to believe that you can take just that one step.